Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I wanna walk you through how to access and make the most out of automation in Logic. It's such a robust toolkit, and I feel like no other DAW has such depth to automation as Logic does, and it really just takes getting to know the system and how it works. Now, this is not a video into the different modes of automation like touch or write. In fact, I have a whole other video dedicated to that topic, so I'll just link it in this video if you want a little more insight into that end of things. But we're gonna cover a number of details from accessing automation, track versus region-based automation, how to flip the two. So if you have some track-based automation that you wanna turn into region-based, no problem. How to access the subtracts and details along the way. First things first, we just need to cover automation is your ability to have logic adjust parameters in real time as your song plays. So maybe you have a synth track that you want to drop in volume at a specific moment. No problem, write some automation for the fader on the channel strip to reduce at that moment. Or if you'd like your distortion to get more excited at a specific moment, no problem. You can adjust that as well. Really anything you can think of can have automation written for it so it adjusts over time. Now I have two Apple loops here. One's an electric piano, the other's a synth and they're different style of regions. One's an audio track, the other's a software instrument track, and this is on purpose because there's some slight differences between the two when it comes to automation. Let's take a quick listen to each one. Cool, let's now hear the synth. Both sound great to me. Okay, now I'm sure most people are aware, but to access automation within Logic, we either click the show hide automation button right here in the menu bar or use key command A, which I think is just too easy to not remember. And the regions kind of invert their colors to let us know we're in a different mode in Logic. And we see these lines going from the beginning of the track way past the end of the screen. And these lines represent a parameter in Logic. Typically by default, it's gonna be your fader or volume on your channel strip and we can get right to work if we wanna adjust the volume. So if we click anywhere within this track, so we'll just zoom in, click anywhere, we've now enabled automation for this track. And to start writing automation, you've got a variety of ways. Number one, you could just use your pointer tool. You can just click anywhere on this line once enabled, and we can start drawing in what are called nodes. And you can pull up and down on the nodes themselves or on the line itself, drag it both horizontally and vertically. And now we've created this dropping effect in volume. So let's just watch the fader and watch it do its thing. Beautiful. We could also use the pencil tool. So if I use key command T and hold command, I can set the pencil tool as my command click tool. You can do the same thing, either just set the tool as the pencil tool, but I like to keep my dominant tool always as a pointer. And then right here is your command click tool on the right. And let's just draw it in, hold command, Start drawing in automation, very cool. We can also use the marquee tool, which is very helpful for selecting a range that we want to adjust. So using key command T again, holding command, selecting the marquee tool, make a selection, and then click on that selection. And now it looks like we only have two nodes, but if we drag up or down, we actually have four, which is very helpful. And we can remove a node by double clicking. And we can also obviously adjust. You can also make a selection with the pointer tool of multiple nodes, and then you can adjust both of them or all of them at the same time. And to delete all of these nodes, we just make a selection, hit delete. But just be aware that we have a node down here and you might have nodes in other places that you just weren't aware of. And for now, we will always have an active automation lane for this track. If you don't want that, just make sure to select all the nodes, hit delete, and boom, now we're at an inactive state of automation. And of course, you can always write automation with the fader itself. So let's set the mode for automation to touch. And I'll just adjust the fader. Here we go. Hit play, and then I'll start dragging the fader around. Beautiful. And this extends itself to plugins, instruments, smart controls, anything else. All you have to do is decide what parameter are you hoping to have adjust over time. And to do that, we go to the drop down menu here in the track header. And we have options ranging from smart controls to volume, some main parameters like panning, so we can adjust the panning of a track, or soloing or muting the track, or even bypassing the instrument or the plugins. Or we could choose parameters 
of an actual instrument or plugin itself. So in the compressor, we could choose to adjust the gain or the knee. I'm gonna suggest instead of diving down this menu every time you wanna adjust something, go up to mix and make sure to enable auto select automation parameter in read mode. What this is gonna do is if we open smart controls, if I click on this reverb knob, we're gonna see the parameter in focus update to the knob that I click on. Boom, so now it's the reverb instead of the volume. And this is much easier because I often find if I'm diving down that menu all the time, I'm kind of like getting lost trying to find what parameter it was that I wanted to adjust. Instead, you just open your plugin or your instrument, click on it, and now it updates. Now I'm gonna make sure to adjust this back to read mode. And I'm also going to make sure we'll click on this and delete all this automation. Now we have to decide if we want to adjust either track-based automation or region-based automation. This is pretty cool. Right now we're in track-based automation and you know this because if I click anywhere, the automation line here extends the entire length of the track. But we can also have region-based automation. If we click on right here, we can switch between track or region and we can see something has changed here. If I go into the drop-down menu, we now have added parameters, and this is specific to software instrument tracks and drummer tracks, where not only can we impact smart controls, volume, plugin parameters, but also MIDI. In fact, I'm gonna go down to sustain, and you just wanna make sure to click in the region. Cool, we'll set this down to zero, but right here, I'm gonna bump it up, and from here, we've now automated the MIDI information to sustain on this chord. Check it out. And so it's not just plugin parameters that you can automate, it's pretty cool. And again, this is specific to region-based automation for software instruments and drummer tracks. Now we're gonna kind of back up here. I'm gonna get rid of this. And I'm gonna select something like the compressor and its attack function. The compressor's not enabled right now, but this is just to demonstrate a point. So we now written some automation specific to this region. And if I move the region itself, check it out, if I move it, the automation follows the region. It's specific to that region. Whereas if we switch back to track-based automation and you can have both, you know, you can have track-based and region-based simultaneously. But if I go back to track and I make this adjustment and then I move my region, I'm gonna get this question because I have a preference enabled. Do you want to move the track automation data just as a safety net? But I'm gonna set it to don't move. And then if we go back, our automation just stays put on the track itself. So they're independent of one another. Now we're gonna back up again. Now check this out. If we decide that this automation on the region is something that we wish had been track-based and not region-based, we can just go up to mix, go down to convert automation, and we can convert either visible track automation to region or the other way around, or we can convert all track automation to region automation or the other way around. This seems pretty abstract, so let's just set convert visible region automation to track automation. Boom, so now if we switch back to region, we don't have any automation on the region. It's now track-based automation. And if we go back to mix, convert, and then switch this from track to region, and now it's back to being region-based automation, which is really helpful. If you've written a ton of automation, you're like, oh man, I need to move that region now. I want it to all follow the region itself. You can swap it up, no problem. But just be aware with MIDI automation, it's not gonna convert because in this case, if we make this selection and then adjust it, MIDI automation is specific to region-based automation. So if we now try to flip this and then we just have to make sure to select our region, convert the visible region automation to track, nothing happens. The last bit I wanna show you is the subtracks of automation because maybe you don't wanna work with just one automation lane at a time. And I'm gonna switch this back to track-based. As we can see, we have some compression automation written. Let's click on the fader here and I'll write some automation for this and then click on the pan. Now let's write it for that. So now we've got quite a bit going on in terms of automation and maybe I wanna dig into all of these at the same time. Well, if we click on this disclosure triangle here and then squash this up, now we can see all three lanes one after the other. That way we don't have to flip constantly between our automation track lanes. We can just see all three or all five or all hundred all side by side. And from here, you can rearrange the automation lanes. So we have the pan, we have volume and compressor, but maybe I want compressor right here. Or maybe I don't even wanna see this volume subtract at all. So let's click this X. 
cool, it's still there. It's just not in view. Or we can add an automation lane by clicking on the plus. And now we have the mute automation lane if we want to write for that. But we can also, of course, pick from the drop down menu here. Last thing is that you can turn off automation at any time just by clicking on this power button right here. And we've now turned off automation for this track. You can also click on the automation mode within the channel strip itself. There will be a power button which you can shut down or enable. And automation extends even beyond this. I mean, if we open the piano roll editor, we can also open automation within this view by pressing A. And look, now we have our region based automation, track based, and we can select from our drop down. And once again, if we select maybe the compressor and click on a knob, boom, we have the same thing again. And you can also adjust the parameter without writing any automation with this slider. And that actually reminds me that you can adjust the entire track's worth of automation in one shot. So let me just demonstrate. Let's set this to the volume and let's collapse this. Now we're in a situation where we have a lot of automation written, but we're finding out that we need to adjust the volume of the track as a whole. But you may have found that if you try to adjust the fader, it's going to start snapping based on the automation. So if I try to adjust this down, check it out. And it starts adjusting on its own. So how do we change the volume for the entire track while preserving our automation adjustments? Well, right here, you saw that I dragged the right edge of the track header and we have this value here. And this is the trim. And if we click and drag up and down on the trim, boom, now we're reorienting this parameter. So maybe we don't want the volume to start at negative 3.2. We want it to start way down, but it preserves the automation and takes it with it which is just so helpful. So I hope you can agree that Logic's automation is quite robust and you can adjust just about anything in Logic. It's just about getting comfortable with the system. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in the series.